Okay. So I really want to use implicit derivatives here, but that's the next section, so I can't. So let me think about this now. Um, y, so this is 279. Y equals sine inverse x squared. So that means sine y equals x squared. So that means sine y um, root equals x. So that means the x dy is a half uh, 1 over root sine y cos y. But then we have to sub back in the y. So that'd be a half cos sine inverse x squared all over uh, x. And if we draw a little right angle triangle here, that's x squared and that's 1 opposite of our hypotenuse. So that side there is root 1 minus x power 4. So that would be a half uh, root 1 minus x power 4 over x. So that means then the y dx would be 2x over root 1 minus x power 4. Yeah, but maybe we can use some table for derivative of sine inverse, cos inverse, and sec inverse, but I just feel like, well, well let's just see. Oh, okay, we have this table here, so I guess we could just use that. Let me check. That's page 312. Let me just check if I was right the way I did it. Two X over root one minus X. Yeah, I'm right. So that's cool. That's cool. But let's save ourselves a lot of heartache and headache. And uh, where is it now? Okay, okay, there we go. 280. So that would be dy dx cos inverse derivative is minus 1 over root 1 minus x squared. So that's root x squared. So that's x. And then times the inside derivative. Bring down the power, reduce the power by one. So, uh, yeah, we can clean that up a little bit, but we can just leave it like that too. 281. So, dy dx equals sec inverse. Sec inverse is one over absolute. So that's the absolute of 1 over x. Uh, root x squared minus 1. Root 1 over x squared minus 1 times uh, um, minus 1 over x squared. This is the chain rule again. 282. Um, dy dx equals, okay, bring down the power. Reduce the power by 1 and multiply it by the inside derivative, which is minus 1 over um, absolute of x root x squared minus 1. The only difference here is the minus 1. That's interesting. Yeah, like the sine cost situation. 
Um, I can uh, be checking these answers to um, 283. The Y, the X equals 3, 1 plus tan inverse X squared, and then derivative of tan inverse is 1 over 1 plus X squared. 284. Okay, um, let, let's um, see, Ch uh, product, you know, product and chain. Okay, dy dx cos inverse derivative. Um, minus 1 over root. 1 minus x squared times sine inverse 2x plus cos inverse 2x 1 over root 1 minus 4x squared uh, and I, I left out the 2 by mistake um, so this should have had a 2 in it and this should have had a 2 in it so I guess I could take out the root part and just be left with cos inverse 2x minus sine inverse 2x. Let's check the answers that we can. Uh, okay. This one is right. Uh, minus one. Oh, I guess they've simplified it a bit, huh? Minus one over root one minus x squared. Yeah, so the x squared can go in and uh, change that to one minus. Um, hang on, let's think about this. We can cancel the x with that making that an x, but then turning it back into a square when it goes under the root. So one over root one minus x squared with a minus on top. Yeah, okay, so that's that's right. That was right as well. 283, three, one plus tan inverse squared over one plus x squared, that looks fine. 284, we, we don't have, we don't have. Now let's just make a little bit of space here. Right, 285, dy dx equals, bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, so that would be tan inverse of x squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the tan inverse, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, 286 dy dx. Uh, well, sec. Okay, uh, sec inverse is 1 over modulus of x, absolute of x, root x squared minus 1. So it actually doesn't matter about the minus on that. I think that's the point of this, this question. So this is an even function, I think is the point here. How about I did the derivative of it? Uh, yeah. 287. Okay, now that's an interesting one. dy dx. Cotan inverse minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's 1 plus or minus x squared times a half one over root or minus x squared and then a 2x here so I can cancel the twos and I can clean this up a little bit minus x over 5 minus x squared times root 4 minus x squared it's a bit messy 
288 dy dx equals x derivative and then cross-sec inverse derivative which is minus 1 over x root x squared minus 1 uh, that's like the sine function, but I'm not sure if the, the SGN function, I'm not sure if they replace it at the back. Let's check the answers now. 285. Uh, 285 minus 1, at, uh, minus 1, 1 plus x squared. Um, 1 plus x squared. Hang on, what was I? Which one am I going to? 285 minus 1, minus 1, tan inverse x squared, and then 1 plus x squared. Did I not write the bracket here? Is it 1 plus x squared like this? Should there be brackets here? Oh, yeah, because, for, yeah, there is, because of how they wrote it, they put these together. So, yeah, that, that so it, and the squares on the inside. So, yeah, so, yeah, no, that's right, that's right. Um, 287, 287, 287, uh, x, and x squared minus 5, if you bring the minus down. But I, no, okay, so, okay, I'm wrong with the minus, just. Oh, uh, yeah, derivative, yeah, I've lost a minus here. That's my mistake. So that's correct now. Um, that's it. Uh, so 286. Uh, I can't check. 288, I can't check. But anyways, hopefully they're right as well. Just made a sign mistake on 287. Apart from that, everything went okay. So, I guess, let's guess that's good. Let's see. Um, what's next now? For, for the, okay. For the following exercise, here's the given values to find F inverse. Okay. Okay, a little bit of simple algebra here, I think, and then tech questions. So two short videos or maybe one long video could do it. Yeah, okay. An implicit differentiation, which I'm looking forward to because I wanted to use that in today's or this section, but I felt I couldn't yet. I like it doesn't look too big then doesn't look too big either so I think we're rapidly closing in on the end of the chapter and reaching the midpoint of the book which is exciting okay great great thanks for watching any problems or questions let me know please and I'll see you all next time